ladies and gentlemen, this past Sunday, at any given Sunday 3, a great majority of the Smash Wrestling faithful were decimated, part and partial, to that turncoat Johnny Gargano deciding to align himself with Gulak, Busick, Tarek, and forming Fourth Gun. Now, it was made very clear that they were in possession of our very coveted Smash Wrestling Championship and that the only way we were going to get it back was if we grant Johnny Gargano a one-on-one -on -one match with Matt Cross for that Smash Wrestling Championship which we had considered vacant considering Alex Shelley didn't show up. Now normally I wouldn't play by anyone else's rules but there are two things in this world I believe in. Number one I believe in Smash Wrestling. I believe in the idea of Smash Wrestling being the best place for professional wrestling in the entire world. And the other thing I believe in is Matt Cross. I firmly believe that Matt Cross can be the one to bring our Smash Wrestling Championship home and end this stupidity surrounding Fourth Gun and our Smash Wrestling Championship. So that's why I'm here today to tell you that officially, April 26th, it will be Johnny Gargano one-on-one -on -one with Matt Cross for the Smash Wrestling Championship. following is brought to you by the Shining Wizards Network, home to many great podcasts, including Neckbreaker, Two and a Half Wrestlers, The Midnight Jury, Pro Wrestling 101, Turnbuckle Throwbacks, Apex Radio, and of course, The Shining Wizards. Available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Audio Boo, and at ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode, another special episode of Smash TV. I'm Scott Hunter alongside James Key and we are here to see Tyson Dukes go one on one with Tarek at Vans Do Not Adjust Your Screens. We are here tonight at Death Proof Fight Club. Every episode of Smash TV is special Scott and the band is back together. I am beside you again. Oh! Oh! As Tarek jumps Tyson Dukes on his way to the ring. Yeah. And, uh, and, so, and Vince, oh. the interesting thing to note here in Death Proof, there are no rules. Traditional traditional wrestling rules do not apply. Yeah. And this is just breaking down to a bar fight early, James. Yep. Uh, Death Proof is a, uh, a, a small company that we like to help out from time to time here. Ty Tarek is taking it to the, the fans. And now back to Tyson Dukes, head first off the ring apron. And Tarek wasting no time taking it to Tyson Dukes. No. Nope. James in a match where rules don't apply. Who do you think that favors in this matchup? Well, it's hard to say, Scott, because as you know, Tyson Dukes is a veteran. He has been in many types of matches. Uh, we've seen the street fight with, uh, with hacker Scotty O'Shea as Tarek spits beer into the face of Tyson Dukes. He was in the street fight with hacker Scotty O'Shea. He was also in that vicious bout with Sebastian Suave at Challenge Accepted. But, uh, but Tarek, no stranger to breaking the rules as we know. That's a very good point, James. I was just going to say, I believe Tarek is willing to go to, to depths that Tyson Dukes won't. Tyson Dukes is confined by his own moral code, and that might be his downfall in this matchup. And I think we saw that at Battle Lines, as Tyson Dukes offered the hand to Drew Gulak, uh, now going by Gulak, uh, my apologies, and, and it resulted in him being susceptible to a beatdown. Fans, I apologize. We're going to try to call this match as best we can. These guys are brawling all over the bar here. Yeah, uh, I can see literally nothing. So uh, yeah, it looks like I said beat down at the right time. Uh, Tyson Dukes 
beating Tarek all the way to the back wall, bringing him back to the ring. It's Tarek trying to seek salvation back inside the wrestling ring, and that's where Tyson Dukes is most comfortable. Oh, absolutely. I think that's where his advantage definitely lies. And here we go, Tarek now thrown into the ring. Tyson Deuce follows, and I, I believe the match is now officially underway, James. Oh, I don't know. It's it's uh, different here, right? Tyson Dukes with a spinal tap kick right to the spine of Tarek. And Tarek is hurting here in the early going to this matchup. And again, the point of the knee right to the back of Tarek. Tyson Dukes is taking his time, just stalking Tarek. Yeah, they call Tyson Dukes the cyborg. He's very calculated in everything he does. Smart move going after the back as it's really your center of gravity for everything you do in the ring. Well, that just goes to show how big this feud really is between Smash Wrestling and this faction here that Tarek is a part of, that it's, it's left Smash Wrestling. It's gone beyond the borders. We're now here in Death Proof and Tyson Dukes is still taking it to Tarek. The reaches of Tarek and Gulak and Busick and Shelly reach further than the boundaries of Smash Wrestling, and we're seeing that on display right now as Tyson Dukes visibly. Tyson Dukes now with a chair. Sorry to cut you off there, James. As he's getting it set up here, and he's looking to do some damage to Tarek. I was saying visibly aggressive, more aggressive than we've seen him in recent, uh, recent shows. Tyson Dukes is not Tarek now perched in that chair. This is a bad position for Tarek, not that I mind. Tyson Dukes sizing him up. Oh, and a kick right to the face, and down goes Tarek, and that is just pure concrete floor. As Tarek, he might have grazed that stage on his way down too, James. Yeah, uh, Tarek in a very bad spot. Uh, not only is he on the ground, obviously, after a boot from Tyson Dukes, but he is right among the Death Proof faithful who have no love loss for him as well. And again, Dukes throwing Tarek back into the ring, back into his home. And again, he just seems to be taking his time here with Tarek. Well, I mean, it's, it's, as we, as you know, as we saw recently... Nice, nah, probably a back saw, suplex. As we saw recently in UFC, it's not a good idea to get too aggressive because you can throw yourself right out of the match. And I think Tyson Dukes is, is a veteran enough to know that. Dukes setting up for submission. Oh, and a stop right to the gut. Oh, look at this. That high Boston Crab, that is in deep, that is in dead center of the ring. Will Tarek tap, James? And as you can see, Tyson Dukes worked on the back from the beginning. Now working the back in this Boston Crab, trying to make Tarek tap. And on a night where the Iron Sheik is in attendance, can Tarek be made humble here by Tyson Dukes? No, uh, Tarek reached the ropes, and unfortunately, we don't get to see that. And Tyson Dukes looks to be a little bit frustrated. He thought he had Tarek put away there. Many a man have tapped out to the Boston Crab. And there's no shame in tapping out to the Boston Crab. Oh, man, what a right hand. Down goes Tyson Dukes. Heavy right hand from Tarek. A lot of people say that Tarek has the heaviest hands in the business. His chops are, are feared all across the country. And as you saw right there, it carries a heavy right hand. Uh, Tyson Dukes has no idea where he is right now. And he can take a punch. There's another one. Down goes Dukes again. And Tarek now. Tarek insulting a fan in the crowd, something he's known for. Oh, and a drop kick right to the face, but Dukes trying to get right back up to his feet. And I'll give credit where credit is due. Al uh, sorry, I almost called him Alex Vega. Tarek, as he wants to be known now, has an excellent calf kick that we just saw there. Well, but this is Tarek's problem. He's, he spends so, so much time disrespecting the fans that he takes his eyes off his opponents. He gives his opponents a chance to recover. And Tyson Dukes is not an opponent you want to give an opportunity to. Oh, no, absolutely not. We see right now Tarek being very careful not what to let Tyson Dukes back in this match. What a kick right to the back of Tyson Dukes. And today, here's something I didn't think we were going to see in this matchup, James. This is Tarek taking it to Tyson Dukes. Kicking him around the ring. But again, he takes his eye off the ball. Well, that's the thing. I don't think you ever want to count anybody out in wrestling, but a man, like I've always said, the skill of Tarek, and you hear that kick again, you you can't, you have to treat everybody as a threat. And James, it's almost like these fans are getting into the head of Tarek. 
Yeah, this is not the smart decision, I'll tell you that. He should keep his eye on the prize. And this, and this was his problem in Smash Wrestling for forever. It's the fans, the fans getting into his head. Maybe he wasn't hugged enough as a child. It's very possible. And Tyson Dukes with a chop to get himself back into this matchup. There's another one. Into the oh, corner goes Tarek. We talked about the chops of Tarek. Tyson Dukes is just, oh. But a chop of his own now, and Tarek once again in control of this matchup. And there and you another hear. Another right hand. You can hear how heavy that right hand is. Irish whip, reversal there by Tyson Dukes. Oh, man. Swinger for the fences with that chop, James. Yeah, it's almost baseball season. Pitchers and catchers have reported for spring training. Now reversal from Tarek, and the whole ring shook with that one. But up and over goes Tarek, landing on the apron though. Oh man, a nice forearm shot. Oh, Tarek getting caught in the ropes there. Oh, but he connects anyway. That's, that springboard spinning flatliner is something. Tyson Deuce planted face first as Tarek, the damage might be done to that ankle of Tarek. As he got caught in the ropes, here's a cover. Two and no. My God, and again, Tarek again in firm control. Did you think we were going to see this out of Tarek in a match with Tyson Dukes, James? Well, I mean, especially as as his fellow, you know, running mates aren't here with them. I, I got to say, I hate to say it, but I have to. I'm impressed with his aggressive cover. Only a two count. Oh, Tarek. Complete disrespect he picks up Tyson Dukes. I'm He's not with done his, with him. I'm impressed with his aggressiveness. I'm not impressed with his lack of respect for one of the best performers to ever come out of this but, area. Well, and that's the thing. I, I feel like Tarek feels like he's been disrespected uh, by the Smash Wrestling fans, by Smash Wrestling management, but it's 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 not disrespect. Give credit where credit's due. This man is a very well accomplished professional wrestler, James. It's just his attitude. Double clothesline there, taking out both men. And both men landed hard there, James. Yeah, knocking the wind out of both. Both men working on the back of each other, all match. Tyson Dukes trying to get himself back to his feet. A man who many consider to be the godfather of professional wrestling here in Canada. He blocks a punch and delivers one of his own. Tyson Dukes is fighting back. Never count Tyson Dukes out. He always has a plan, always has something up his sleeve. But there's Terry right now. Kick. Oh, hang on. Oh! Fisherman Brain Buster. Down goes Tarek. That's and huge. now Tyson Dukes picking up a head of steam and a clothesline. Trying to take the head off of Tarek. Cover. Getting. Oh! Turn about fair play, James, as Tyson Dukes picks Tarek's head up off the mat. No, I can't, I can't argue with it, but I'm not going to say it's a good idea. I mean, at this point, take the win, put Tarek away, stand up for Smash Wrestling. At any point, if you have a chance to win a matchup, you do it. Because all it takes is one split second. But Tyson Dukes, Tarek has gotten under his skin. Oh, man, he's going to... If you, you look at the shots delivered here by Tyson Dukes, there seems to be just a little bit more on it, a little bit more sting to it. And this thing just turned out into a brawl. Nice Canadian lifter there from Tyson Dukes. And Tyson Dukes, all these shots from Dukes are right to the head of Tarek. What a kick to the sternum. And these are just heavy shots being thrown back and forth. Oh, discus punch. Just, and Tyson Dukes barely flinched from that. And now he's taking Tarek down to size. And right outside the ring goes Tarek. He will get no salvation outside and there. Where is he he's, going? He's leaving. He's going home. Tarek is walking out on a match with Tyson Dukes. He's going home. And Tyson. And he went home. That was my Bob Cole impression in case you didn't know. Well, now, I don't know what happens here in Death Proof, James. I don't know if they if they have a count of rule or Well, I, we see the referee talking to the ring announcer. Doesn't know what to do in this case. Oh, Tyson Duke shirt.
We're being told by producer Alan we're done here. <laughs> we apologize for the profanity from the fans here. Tyson Deuce, your winner by, I, I suppose, forfeit. But the fans, stay tuned to Smash TV. A lot more to come here tonight. Yeah. Brad, here comes a man who has made a name for himself in this business, and now tonight looks to make a name for himself here in Smash Wrestling. I can only hope and pray that he's on our side, as it's the oh debut of the Sicilian psychopath, Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, God, that's a terrifying man. That is absolutely horrifying. Yes. Brad, we look down the roster of any given Sunday. This has that. This is WWP Weekly Wrestling Podcast. Jimmy Corderas from Machino Music comes. <laughs> High Speed Flamingo. What's going on, Smash Wrestling fans? I'm hanging out on the couch. Casting couch. A couch. Talking to hacker Scotty O'Shea about some of his favorite road stories. Now you got a cool story I hear. Well once I once I sobered up and I dropped the alcohol and the hard drugs, the only story I can really recall is uh, we were going to uh, I, I don't know, it probably wasn't even far, but I was in the car with Joey Kings, you've probably never heard of him, but he's a, he's a big man, he's a black belt in something, uh, he's, a, he's a tough guy, and uh, word got around to me that uh, he gets really, really grossed out with uh, food, and like he, he can't go to Subway because he sees people make food, and just grosses them out, and he just has that, like, everybody's got their weird thing, his is just kind of... Uh, I guess he. I guess he's a germaphobe. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So I found this out when we were in a Target. So I proceeded to get on all fours, all fours on the floor, and started licking the tile in Target up and down, trying to make a puke. And he wouldn't go. And then so I decided I'd try to lick handrails and stuff. And he wouldn't go. And finally, I'm trying everything I can to make him throw up. It's not happening. So I'm, I'm about to give up. We leave Target, and I see 
I see one of those garbage cans with those lids that you have to punch through to drop everything, and it is filthy. So I go, here's my moment, this is oh. it. The clouds have parted, I see it, I lick the garbage can, and he throws up all over Ethan Page's back tire. Smash Wrestling fans, I'm here with Shane Sabre, Kirk Warmack, the GOAT Brigade, for another edition of Road Stories. Warmack, Sabre, I'm sure you guys travel all over the place together. What are some of the craziest things that have happened, or interesting things that have happened? Uh, this one time, we went to Steak and Shake, and we got two burgers and milkshakes. It's a pretty fun time. What kind of milkshake, though? And does it bring all the boys to the yard? Of course. Salted, salted caramel pretzel. And then he got Oreo. He only eats Oreo milkshakes. Well, you only eat Oreo milkshakes. It can't be like any other... No, no, no. Absolutely not. I really don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I should have cut it somewhere. Let's go for the gag reflex. This man licked the bottom of the shoe. I saw. I don't know what you see. I was trying to go in. What's going on, Smash Wrestling fans? We're here with Josh Alexander for yet another Road Stories with Smash Wrestling. Now, Josh, you have a story for us. Yeah, and I have to start off by saying that this is no longer the 80s. So we're not banging hookers and doing rails off of people and whatever else people used to do. What? Why not? Because I don't know, the time has passed. Everybody died. We have to learn our lesson. Now we're all health fanatics. All we do is drink Monster Energy drinks and drive around, right? All right. So I go on trips all the time, whatever, 12 hours in the car here and there, blah, 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 blah. This one time, we had a trip to Baltimore. 10-hour drive there, 10-hour drive back. Go Rams. You know, we weren't looking forward to it, as usual, because it's hard to stay awake. But this one time, the guy that I was driving with had this idea. He had this little thing, I don't know what it is, because I'm not very technically proficient, where you can plug everything into it. So he decided to pack his... 32 inch plasma screen and his PlayStation 1 and we proceeded to plug all this in and in the back seat I got to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater all the way to Baltimore and back. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1? Yes, the original, the, the good one. Okay, so who do you use in Tony Hawk Pro Skater? Uh, Bob Burnquist. Burnquist. Can't believe I remember that name. Nice. That's probably more impressive than the story. What's going on, Smash Wrestling fans? Dustin Perry here, talking to Smash wrestlers about their favorite road stories. Right now, I'm hanging out with Brent Banks, man of a thousand different nicknames. You know them all? Well, I know of a few of them. I know there's some you don't want to go by anymore. I know there's Money. I know there's the One Man Dynasty. I know there's Y'all. No, no, no. Nope, can't nope, use them. No, nope, no, okay. no. Don't try to be funny now. I don't know, not. There's more, though. You got plenty. And there's probably plenty of stories that you have about traveling up and down the road. Yeah, All right, well, indulge the smash holes, if you will. You know, most of my stories are ones I, I, I can't really tell. That it's, it's not really in your business. I don't even know why I'm telling you any road stories. A lot of my stories aren't even PG, so I don't even know why I can even share it now. But if you need one story, I guess I can think of a time myself and... I believe it was uh, Tarek and uh, Michael Elgin on the way to a show in Chicago. And it was the very first time that Brett Banks here truly actually had a little skull in his mouth riding in the back. And Michael Elgin just gives me a little tiny bang. He says, here, don't worry, I'll just relax. You'll be okay. Don't worry. If, if, if you don't do this, I'm not giving you the ride. So I said, cool. He gave some to Tarek. Gave some to me. I said, whatever. I'll have a little bit of chew. Spit it in the bottle. Five minutes later, pulls off to a rest stop. I get out of the van. I almost fall over. Because if you've never had chew before, that thing gets you buzzed. I almost couldn't even get to the trash can just to spit it out. Ever do it again? No. Ever ride with Elgin again? Yes. But he didn't force me to do it the next time. Because I told him. Don't do chew, kids. It's not good for you. No. Oh. Chew's bad. Stay away. So, it's official. Uh, I forgot. 
Oh, I'm so black right now. Yep. <laughs> All day. <laughs> What's going on, Smash Wrestling fans? We're here for another Smash Wrestling road story. This time, we're talking to Tyler Thomas. What's up, man? How's it going? Good, man. You have a good story for us here. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was at a show a couple months back, and uh, I was actually their champion at the time. And Not bad. Uh, hey, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. So um, we go into the main event, and I was dropping the title, um, but a, a woman higher up in the company was not told what was going on. Um, so we do the match, it goes off, um, finish is done, I don't have the title. This woman, who will remain nameless, uh, <laughs> storms into the back, like, so mad, starts throwing things, and starts yelling at, um, the rest of the office, we'll say, and, um, she thought, um, that it was not a planned thing. Right. Um, she thought that they were playing a joke on me, she was not told what was happening. She thought I wasn't told what was happening. It was a screw job. Uh, exactly, that's what she thought it was. Um, so obviously, I let on that I thought it was a screw job. Oh, of course. You can only imagine how this said woman felt. It was probably the funniest time in my wrestling career so far. 100%. What's going on, Smash Wrestling fans? Dustin Perry sitting down talking with John Greed uh, about some of his favorite road stories. A lot of pro wrestlers, which you are, travel up and down the road all over the place, and there's some crazy shenanigans sometimes that goes on on the road. Well, I wouldn't say shenanigans. Okay. Because, you know, we're just trying to get there and get home. There's one time on the way to C4 in Ottawa, I'm in the car with uh, Sebastian Suave and the man who cannot be named back when we were friends. And, uh, you know, snowstorm. Get stuck behind a tractor trailer that is tipped over. Unbelievable. We're sitting on the, on the highway for two and a half hours, just in the freezing cold, incredibly late for the show. Plan the match in the car. <laughs> Not really, because you don't plan it. At all. Still real to me, damn it. But anyways, you know, and uh, see this man walk out. He's got uh, one of those reflective vests on. So we think he, he, he's running stuff. Incorrect. He's wait, just, wait, he's out, when he's outside? Like, he's outside just walking up and down the road. Oh, in his, just chilling in, his, in the vest. In his, yeah, in his, uh, in his vest. Like he's running the show and he's knocking on windows. We're like, oh, maybe this guy knows what's going on. So we roll the window down. He says, hey, boss, can I get a cigarette? That's it. That's, uh, so yeah, that's my crazy road story. So that was a cigarette bumming vest. It wasn't that's, like It was a, a cigarette bumming vest. We called him Elmer Flood. It was a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's a boring road story. What do you want from me? It's <laughs> good enough. Okay. My habitat of control. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. My heart's ready to go. Tell that reaper I paid that toll. I'm going in. This match, Brad. I'm, oh my God! I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say during this match. Scotty O'Shea has a chair set up. No. Don't do this. Control. No. Alt. No. 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 Control. Oh my God!